Well, how do y'all feel about the job search coming up? What what, what year are you in now? <laughs> We're juniors. juniors. How are you feeling about it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to season six, episode four of For the Generation podcast. I'm your host, Natalia Velasco. And I'm Alexa Gilmest. And today we're here with Simone Jackson. Hey y'all. Simone Jackson joined career and professional development as the Associate Director of Graduate Programs and Education Professions in April 2023. Before LMU, Simone worked at UCLA as the Assistant Director of First Generation Student Initiatives through the First to Go program. She has extensive experience working in fraternity and sorority life, first year experience, new student orientation, and multicultural student programs and services. Simone is a Los Angeles native and received her bachelor's degree from Arizona State University in speech and hearing sciences and family human development and her master's degree in higher education from California State University Fullerton. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks. I'm so excited to be here We're with you We're so excited to interview you. Do you have anything else you want to add? No, outside of the fact that this is like a so surreal moment because <laughs> I was working with First to Go so closely over the last few years. So to put both of my favorite things together, career, First to Go, it's great. Yay. <laughs> so All thanks right. for having me. Of course. Okay, to start off, so what does your day usually look like at CPD? It was very busy, hence I was like, I'll be right back, and then I'll get ready. <laughs> like, moment is set. Um, I think most of my days include meetings with students, mm-hmm. so sometimes it's just a meeting to follow up about an event or a presentation that they saw with me, and they want to have more you know, dialogue about what, what we talked about, whether it's networking or something like that. And then sometimes it's a coaching, career coaching appointment, so students can book me at any time that I'm not in a meeting. Mm-hmm. They can book with me. Um, specifically, I coach School of Ed students, so students okay. who are graduate students, but I do a lot of undergraduate coaching too, just because I meet y'all, yeah. and then you want me to be your coach, and that's totally fine with me. Um, staff meetings, and then a lot of collaborations. So right now my days are full of, um, it was recruiting graduate schools to come to the campus Mm -hmm. um, for our grad fair in October. Um, we're at 90 schools now. Oh, so I wow. think I've done the That's recruiting. That's so lot. <laughs> now I just need all y'all to come. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, but I'm super excited about that. So now it's just managing like large scale events like that, mm-hmm. which I think my background serves me well to do that, mm-hmm. but on a new campus. So yeah, oh, super fun. Those are my days usually. What would you say is the most hectic time of the year for a CPD? Um, for CPD, it's all, and for most people in higher education, it's the very beginning of the school year and the very end of the school year, because we're trying to make sure that you all are doing well as you're entering right. in, mm-hmm. whether you're a first time here, you're a transfer student, you're a new first in, uh, direct entry student, or you're leaving, right? And mm-hmm. at least for our office with career professional development, we get a lot of folks close to the end, right? Yeah. A lot of those career coaching appointments, spring is very full, sorry, uh, with a lot of events, with a lot of different people wanting to meet with us just mm-hmm. on a one-on-one basis and not so broadly. And so our office gets pretty busy. But I started April 2023. So okay. I caught the very end of last oh. year. So I'm going to see what it's really like. <laughs> oh gosh. Was it super busy when you got here? You know, it was busy, but I think if, to be honest, our, it was busy because our office was changing. We've mm. had like an entire office staff change. And oh, so wow. it's new people, including myself. We have a completely new director for employer engagement. We have some new coaches for health professions, STEM, Um, new director so it's a lot of like getting to know new people Mm -hmm. getting to know new um, ways of doing things Mm -hmm. we also are for for the first time coming back fully in person so like the fairs that we've done career fairs that we've done this uh, I still say quarter sometimes uh, (laughs) this semester um, we're the first ones that we've done in person since 2019 oh wow so Yeah, we're like looking at the old files like, that don't even make sense. (laughs) We're trying new things. So yeah, it's a little busy, but we're we're doing good. Yeah. Okay, so before joining LMU, you worked at UCLA as the Assistant Director for First Gen Student Initiatives. Mm -hmm. How has this experience shaped your approach to supporting students in their academic and professional journey? Well, I think it's... It puts a lot of heart into my work that really never goes away. Mm -hmm. Um, To be someone even remotely attached to First to Go, you just know that there's just a connection to it Mm -hmm. that you just never leave. And um, I feel really honored to have worked with 
the creator, the founder, if you will, of First to Go, uh, mm-hmm. LT, Latanya Reese Miles. I'm sure she may watch this. So hi, LT. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, I got a chance to work under her, right? She was my director. I started there as a, a coordinator of first year experience. It was pretty much one of my first jobs in student affairs. And it was a all women of color team. Oh, wow. And to be young and new and working full time in such an impactful role and in, mm-hmm. in this, such an impactful time um, of the world, right? right? Even during the pandemic is really when I started my work with First to Go there. Um, it was big. And so my transition into that role and working with students, I recognize that personalization is really important. Mm -hmm. Right. Students don't want to feel like you're saying something that has can kind of catch everyone. Mm -hmm. They want to know that like me from Riverside that lives with my family and drives all the way to UCLA and wants to become a doctor. There's something for me. Right. Right. Versus like who wants to be a doctor. Right. And so it's really important specifically for our first gen students to be able to know that there's someone there for them that's calling them out specifically that understands Mm -hmm. their experiences. And if they don't have that experience directly, they know who to bring to the table so that all the students feel supported. So that's what I learned there. And now trying to bring it here. Yeah, for sure. (laughs) Yeah, which it already is because y'all are doing great. (laughs) Thank you. What would you say the biggest difference is between working at a big school like UCLA and a smaller school like LMU? Oh my gosh. I think (laughs) the first couple of months that I was here, I was like, (laughs) because it was like, I I was on all the time, right? Um, There are 10,000 undergraduate first gen students at oh UCLA. There are 10,000 students here in general. That's crazy. Might right? be less. I think. Right. Yeah. Or less, right? And so that was just the undergrads. I was also relaunching the graduate first gen initiatives programs which I do want to do here too. Yeah, sure. Um um and do some more work with our graduate students, but um it was just the volume was bigger. So I was advising, I had a advisory board, we were doing some national work, we were an advisory institution, um, we had a lot of focus groups, meetings, um, every school that wanted to do something, first to go to law school, first to go to med school, seven different student orgs, it was just, it, I felt like I was running my own little school. <laughs> um, but it didn't allow me to get really one-on-one time with mm-hmm. students. I, the biggest amount of time I got with my students were with the ones that worked for the office. Mm-hmm. So um, we call them the trailblazers uh, at UCLA, our student interns. And so that was their role. And those were really the students I talked to the most. Mm-hmm. Um, also, there's a lot of services at such a big school like UCLA. So even things like um, basic needs or like emergency care, Mm -hmm. I would resource that out. Whereas here, I handle it a little bit more on my own and then resource it out. But there's a lot of different resources there. So now I get to talk to y'all. And when I walk out my door, I usually see you. It's very easy to bump into you (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, at LMU. I feel like I'm always going, oh, hi. I used to like never literally my office was on a hill in their res life hall it takes 20 minutes to just even get to the center of campus walking so I it was very hard to just run into my students right now I run into y'all all the time which is nice (laughs) can you tell us a little bit more about the graduate programs you work with yeah here at LMU so mostly I work with school of education students Mm -hmm. um, which is really cool because I have my master's degree in higher education Mm -hmm. Um, but what I really love about LMU School of Ed is that we do not just like higher education, but counseling. So if you're someone that's interested in working in mental health or supporting um, K through 12 um, with like school counseling, school psychology, there's a lot of programming there for you. And so I've had to kind of really turn some of my lens on about how to help students who in one way want to start their own private practice and another way want to be the director of First to Go and in another way want to be a school counselor for like elementary school teachers. Mm -hmm. So all of my coaching appointments are a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Um, I think with the graduate programs here beyond School of Ed, LMU is beginning really becoming really innovative with all of the programs you have here, real estate, um, just, you know, computer science, all the different things that we have here. There's a lot of options, um, a lot of four plus one, which are you do four years here and just add one more year and you get the master's. Right. Um, yeah. So um, my initial job right now is School of Ed, but of course we'll be going 
widespread with all of the programs and how we can support them. Super cool. Mm-hmm, yeah. Yeah. How would you say it differs from the undergraduate program? Different? Yeah. Um, I would say they're different because graduate school, if you all are ever interested, graduate school, it feels a little bit more like, okay, this is the boat I've decided to, to go in, yeah. right? And um, even uh, the myth is you feel, people think that when you choose a particular major or program as a graduate student, that person just knows what they want to do. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you that most people in their third class are like, do I really? But now I'm already locked into like this whole thing. Everybody knows I'm going to grad school yeah. for this one thing. So even graduate students are like, I don't know if this is really for me. How can I make this degree transferable? How can I make this degree worth my time? And so a lot of my career coaching is around that. Whereas for my undergraduate students, um, you all have more time here and you have more. It feels like a more option to explore, right? You can yeah. bounce from college to college. You can pick up a minor. You can do a major in graduate school school it's not like that it's actually much more of a personal transformation right the classes are more conversational the work is more related to the reading and it's a really about connecting with the professors on a one-on-one -on -one basis mm -hmm. because the next step is to be them if you really yeah. wanted to right and get your doctorate yeah. so yeah what would you say to someone who's like an undergrad and trying to figure out grad school like but they don't exactly know what they want to do like mm. what tips would you say to kind of, I guess not avoid, because it's probably inevitable, but mm -hmm. to be like, okay, this is for sure what I want to do once you get there. Who, for undergrads that are thinking about grad yeah. school, I would say talk to someone who's in that program, okay. right? And it, sometimes it can feel very hard for students to say like, well, how would I do that, right? Um, part of it is just a simple reach out in terms of saying like, hey, my name is Simone. I'm really interested in going into school psychology are you free for like 10 minutes to talk in front of Einstein's or Starbucks to like talk about the program? Grad students love talking about being a grad student. <laughs> um, and they love, you know, their timing is a little different. It's at night. I would say the other thing is, is to really check in on how the world is using that particular discipline. So for instance, School of Education, there's a high need for teachers, right? But you also have to recognize what teachers are going through right now right. on the day-to-day -day basis. And if the world does anything crazy like that, again, you are a first line, you're out there, or you're on Zoom all day long. And so recognize you are choosing a profession, right? right? Um, if you decide to continue on with the same degree in the same profession as your graduate program. So take a look, right? Use TikTok, use YouTube, use your friends, use your family. Um, um, if you're interested in med school, if you're interested in law school, definitely take advantage of offices like ours right. or um, like student orgs. I know there's like business fraternities, law fraternities, um, med school student groups where y'all can all talk about the same questions you have. And usually folks will come in and answer those questions, too. Yeah, for mm -hmm. sure. Uh, what would you say the best steps are to earn an internship slash job post-college? The first job out of college. That's always a hard one because I think the trend is that mostly students are um, underemployed. And what I've noticed, even in my own friend group, my own community, or whatever the case may be, is that you can be in the wrong job for a long time. You went to school to become something in business or marketing or science, and somehow you are the manager of Express, which is totally fine because <laughs> they make some good money. <laughs> but this has been the job you've had all four years of college, and you just kind of moved up there, and then it's like, wait, I was in school yeah. while working at Express, yeah. but now I'm the manager of Express, and that's not what I got my degree in. Yeah. I wanted to do something totally different. And I think students have to recognize that there are seasons where you just need a job, and then when you are trying to create a career. Right. And oftentimes, the career happens over time, mm -hmm. right? It's kind of like a wave. It's going to pick up and it's going to slow down. There's going to be moments where you're like, I'm just sitting in the sand. There's going to be moments where you're like, no, I'm going to swim. I'm like going to ride the wave, mm -hmm. you know, and get in there. So for the first job, I say do what go at the pace that makes sense for your life. Mm -hmm. Try not to put so much emphasis on what other people are doing. If it makes sense for you to stay, let's keep using the same example, working at Express for like the first six months or year out of college, okay, 
there's no baby. That's great. That's totally fine. And don't have like, well, I'm a biology major. I was supposed to go to med school. Hey, 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 we got a long life, you know, God yeah. willing to do all those things. So I think try not to succumb to the pressures of what a college degree is supposed to do immediately. Right. Um, it takes time. I say the other thing is, is oftentimes as our students, specifically our first gen students, students of color, maybe students from communities where college wasn't always talked about and more of like the day to day work was what is necessary is being afraid to share what you want to do out loud. Right. So it's like telling people like, yeah, I'm doing this, but what I actually want to be is a fashion designer right. and being open to saying that more often so that people know where to send you. Because I know a fashion designer. So if you don't tell me, then I can't connect you to them. Right. Right. And they may have a job for you. Mm -hmm. So don't be afraid to speak out loud the dreams that you have, the jobs that you want. And then very lastly, start applying. <laughs> right. I always tell any of my students or clients that I'm working with, job searching at the end of the day is a very A plus B equals C thing. You apply. They ask you for an interview. They like you. You like them. You say yes. You got a job. Yeah. So like sometimes we complicate it a little bit too much. Apply to jobs that you really like. I try to say only apply to jobs that you really, really like because I don't want you sitting there frustrated in a job you kind of never wanted when you even submitted it. And then go from there and see what happens. If you feel like you're not getting any interviews, it's probably your resume. If you feel like you are getting interviews but you're not getting jobs, it's probably your interviewing. And we could just go from there and asking for help in those particular areas. Right. Is that helpful? Yeah. I'm trying to make that one real cool. So <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's the thing. What's the biggest challenge you see amongst college students trying to get hired? Um, everyone wants to be the same thing. I often hear that someone wants to be in marketing, which is fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, did I say? <laughs> and it's and the thing about it is, I have no problem that a lot of people are interested in a lot of the same things. Right. The difference is, is what makes you stand out in that. So right now, all of you, maybe you're interested in marketing, but I don't know a lot of people that could do this podcast setup. And then I'll read their <laughs> resume and it doesn't say anything about it. And I'm like, wait. You're using what kind of camera and how expensive is it? You're using what kind of audio and what, you know, vertibles, or I should, I was a speech and hearing science major. I should know all the different ver verbiage for audio. Like, you know what? I mean, like, you know how to do what interviews? You know how to do what? I mean, you've booked who? I, so you, there's so many things. And I'll read the resume and it'll say, did a podcast for 2022 to 2025. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll send you our resume. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, you know, that's the thing. It's yeah. like, that's the piece where it's like, I it's totally fine if everyone wants to be in marketing, but let's talk about it. Like, let's talk about the things of, because most of my students that are interested in marketing, most of my students that want to go into business, most of my students that want to go into, you know, STEM, computer science, IT, cybersecurity, there, there's very popular things. And that happens with every decade of, of groups, right? Mm. There's a hot industry, if you will, tech, if you will, right? It's totally fine. But how are we going to share? Most likely, you have naturally given yourself to that particular profession, whether it's you like to write, you do a podcast for free, you learned on YouTube all about audio. If I go on the thing, you love finances and stocks and you can tell me all about Wall Street. Let's talk about that in your resume. Mm. That's what I'm not seeing as mm. much. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is there any tips you have for finding paid internships? paid internships well I would I cannot lie that honestly if you're a student in college looking for an internship you really should have a handshake account and I was in school before handshake came out I'm sure there was something else I felt like the career center wasn't really for me because I was a speech and hearing science major so for me it was very set that if you are this major you will become a speech pathologist right I am not a speech pathologist <laughs> by the way I can't even remember the audio versions of different <laughs> things so please don't kind of me for that but basically I, I think that you definitely want to make sure that when you are looking for internships you got to utilize the things that you're currently paying for. Right. You're paying for, in some way, shape, or form, in your tuition and in your work, handshake. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And so Handshake is this company. And and for folks that maybe aren't in, you know, at LMU or things like that, it might be 1220. It might be something. Your career center has something, mm-hmm. right? And so it's important for you to use those because employ- these big companies hire very specific teams. They're called early career talent. And they want you all, their whole job is to hire you, just you. Early career talent, that's mm-hmm. what it is. People are getting paid good money to find students like you. And to be honest, I've had companies specifically say first gen. Like really? that's who we want. We want first gen students. Mm-hmm. Now there's, there's reasons why, maybe or maybe not, you know, that there's, but hey, ride the wave of what you know people are looking for, right? right? Yeah. So um, that would be something, if you're not someone that's like wanting to necessarily use Handshake or you've used it, but you just feel like you haven't gotten a lot of success out of it. Another thing is to see who in your space um, has an internship that they enjoy. So if it's a classmate, don't just go to class and then walk out. Get to talking to people. Right now, the best benefit of being in college is that you have your biggest network ever, the closest to you in your discipline that you're interested Mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. Y'all are your biggest network right now. I haven't had two, I went to Arizona State, so there was 200 people in a class. I haven't had 200 people in one class that all want to do the same thing as me since I've been to college. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So y'all should start talking to each other, (laughs) you know, going to these events or joining the student orgs and just saying like, hey, did you get an internship? Do you have an internship? Y'all are your biggest support system. Um, And then we come in and help you all elevate that with your resume, Mm -hmm. bringing employers to you. But often the conversations you have with each other are going to be great ways to um, find some paid internships. Mm Mm-hmm. What do you think is the best city to get hired in post-college? Oh, I don't know. I don't. Okay, okay this is where I have to stop <laughs> <laughs> preparing. I didn't see all the questions. I know, this one's kind of random. But well, I you like, know what? Mm. I, I think that there are hot spaces for different industries, mm-hmm. right? So I don't know all of them by heart and by all the different things, but what I know for sure is that in certain areas, like if you're in Texas or something like that, there might be like different oil companies or like Southwest is there. So there might be a lot more jobs there. Um, In Seattle, there's Amazon, like there's some really big spaces and places. So when you're doing a job search, I always tell students, it's similar when I used to teach students about which college they wanna go to. You first want to start off about, yeah, where do you want to live? If you want to live in L.A., great. If you want to live, if you're open to living anywhere, fabulous. Now we can apply everywhere. Mm -hmm. Then it's what are the industries you're open to? Most of the students I'm I'm talking to that are undergrad that have a tendency to like talking to me are very interested in beauty, fashion, marketing, some type of something like that. Mm -hmm. So... Let's talk about, are you open to doing marketing and health-related fields like Cedar sinai Are you also re- open to doing it at Google? And then are you also opening to doing it at the small bakery down the street? Like, what are your open options? And then we start targeting those employers. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. That does. Yes. What steps did you take for your career in college? Right. Um, so my steps in college. So the first question that... I asked myself, I literally, I don't know why I remember it so vividly. I was sitting in my apartment, whatever, across the street from the school. I was a junior and I knew that I did not want to be a speech pathologist at that point. I was literally falling asleep in my shadowing appointments. You know how they have like where the kids can't see you in the mirror, but you can see them? Girl, I was in there sleep. (laughs) Sleep. I was like, there's no way I can do this for the rest of my life. I'm sleeping. And I I highly like, I love that profession, but it just wasn't for me. Mm -hmm. Um, I like to talk. So it just wasn't going to work. So Mm -hmm. I sat in my room and I was looking out the window and I asked myself, what is something that I love to do without anyone having to ask me to do it or pay me for it? So similar to what y'all are doing right now. Like for me, it was being the president of my sorority at the time. I could plan a sorority meeting. I could plan anything AKA related. I was like ready to do it just because I loved it. I love my line sisters, my sorority sisters. It was just fun. And then I said, I literally wrote 
everything down. I was like, you don't have to pay me to watch Say Yes to the Dress. <laughs> you don't have to pay me to organize stuff in my room by color code. <laughs> you don't have to pay me to like go to the mall. You don't have to pay me to watch YouTube videos on fashion. And, and I literally just like, what do I love to do? So I, I always suggest students to track their time. Track their time in a week, whether it's, you know, it's a full week or just a regular week. Even the things in you do in your downtime, right? If it's on TikTok all the day, what's your TikTok algorithm looking like? What do you enjoy doing, <laughs> right? Take that. And then what I decided to do was ask my fraternity and sorority life department folks that were my advisors at school. I said, what did you get your degree in? Like, what do you have a degree in? And then they said, student affairs. What is that? I had no idea. Mm -hmm. And they were like, oh, it's this whole thing. I went online and typed in student affairs, and I was like, oh, <laughs> the classes, the masters. This. I just, I fell in love. I was so excited, and I just went for it, and it's been the best thing since then. But that was the first question I asked myself. Um, I went straight into grad school, uh, excuse me, straight into grad school for my undergrad, and I'm not mad at that decision. It gave me, I was really young when I went to grad school. I was 21. I have a late birthday. Go home. Mm -hmm. uh, November. Scorpios. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Love Scorpios. <laughs> Love Scorpios. November Scorpios. So I was, I was, I graduated undergrad really early. And then I went into grad school at 21. And mm -hmm. I honestly needed the extra two years just to be like an adult. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, but that's not everyone's story. Mm -hmm. And so I used grad school as a time. I worked uh, part-time at Cedar sinai as an admin assistant and then the other half I was in Orange County doing a graduate assistantship um, in orientation mm -hmm. and grad school gave me it sharpened my skills as a professional I think when I was in my sorority it helped me be a leader in grad school in those jobs it helped me be a professional it helped me work with people who are older than me mm -hmm. and so that's why I tell students like it's okay just to have a job because you even have to learn what it means to not have a nap between one and three there's no gap at yeah, work between yeah. one and three. You just go to work all day. Yeah, That takes a little bit of a minute to learn. Um, so ask yourself what you would do without asking any questions. And then if somebody says they have a job for you, I suggest you look into it and take mm -hmm. it. You can always be there for a year or so, and I, maybe we'll talk about job hopping. But And then you know move on to something that's more desirable. But that anxiety that a lot of students have when September comes up and you've graduated but you're not going to school anymore – yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, is there any steps you wish you could have taken or you would have taken if you were able to go back now? Yeah, I actually wish that, um, I guess I wish that someone would have told, so I grew up in a, in a family full of educators. My parents, or my, my mom um, was a school teacher, a principal, uh, my aunt was in, everyone just worked as school teachers in my family. Um, so my track was very much education. And when I found higher ed, my mom was like, oh no, don't do that. They don't get paid as much as a speech pathologist. And I, you know, it's fine. It, it, it all worked out. But I wish that I would have gone a little bit more with my gut from the very beginning to explore. Mm -hmm. I wish I would have done a fashion PR internship because now I'm constantly trying to do something, even today, fashion PR on the side or something, something, mm -hmm. right? So it's like you never lose the itch to want to explore. Right. So I wish I would have gave myself more permission to do that outside of my major, mm -hmm. outside of what I thought I was supposed to do. I also wish that I would have um, gone to at least like one career fair or one career related event. I was so nervous to be in a room with other people who I thought were smarter than me. It was just like, I don't want to go to an event with business students because they're super smart. They know math. I can barely do two plus two. <laughs> and I just didn't want to seem like I didn't fit in. Right. So I never took a step. But the crazy thing is those students don't know what's going on either. <laughs> They're trying to figure it out too. They are like trying to figure out what it all means. And had I exposed myself to that, I probably would have found other careers like HR or different things that I would have found that would have also spiked my interest. So I wasn't just so laser focused on student affairs mm -hmm. only. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So explore. <laughs> what resources should students be utilizing here at LMU or even just in general I guess yeah I think that's a good question one I I'm gonna say something that is a duh which is CPD like career centers and things like that but please start tapping into like 
YouTubes and TikToks and social media, LinkedIn, where people tell their real day-to-day life of their jobs. Mm -hmm. Because I think that, you know, things like this, like the podcast, if we were talking about just life as a student affairs professional, Mm -hmm. I would tell you, right, there are moments when maybe you start out when you don't get paid as much, but you work a lot. Like, I think more students need to hear the stories. Um, And so it's important for you, for you all to check in and making sure that you look at different resources like what's available online, what other, um, you, y'all have so much access to other people your same age who share their stories. Well, none of this on the internet really. Like you have one influencer or one person who was like pretty good at sharing their life and most of it was like their college life, not their like thoughts around career. But now so many people online are sharing more about their journeys of getting internships, of finding jobs people in jobs for 20 years are saying the good bad and the ugly of their professions Mm -hmm. y'all should really listen listen in on that and then also um be open to help right um i always say go with where the where life is kind of taking you so let's just use the express manager role for a minute if you are like finding yourself moving up there Maybe tell your supervisor, like, this is something I've wanted, but I've also really loved science. Is there anything in Express on the corporate side that has to Mm -hmm. do with something around, like, color design or something? You know what I mean? Like, don't be afraid to ask the question, even in a box that maybe didn't make sense for you in the beginning. Right. You will probably find the best job ever that way. (laughs) Asking a random question in a place you didn't expect to ask it. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, on the topic of like job hopping that yeah. you mentioned, do you feel like transitioning from UCLA to LMU was like job hopping for you or how do you feel about that? Oh, that's such a good question. And I, I feel like people have been asking me that um, because I did kind of move very quickly in my in my field and in my different roles. Um, I would say that this was a career pivot for me. Mm-hmm. Um, when I worked at UCLA, I was heavily involved in a lot of administrative things in terms of being in charge of stuff from Mm -hmm. advisory boards to student staff. I felt like I was managing something that was absolutely amazing, but I had an extreme passion for career development. And I had already moved up to assistant director level at UCLA. I was like, I'm not going back down. I know that salary. I know that Mm -hmm. time. I've done the work. So when I found this role at LMU as associate director, I was really excited. One, there's a first to go program here. Right. The same program, which Mm -hmm. was like heaven said, oh my gosh, the same thing. The other was that it was career development, which all of this time working at UCLA, I had a side hustle of writing people's resumes Mm -hmm. and um, doing interview prep. I had my own blog, hence the constantly trying to do the fashion thing. (laughs) I had my own blog. I had my own stuff. And so I closed my business down because it was just too much to have a full-time job plus a side hustle. Right. So when this job came up, it was like, oh, my side hustle could just be my main thing. And then I can go home and relax. And now I'm trying to restart the side hustle again, but that's (laughs) for another day. But the point is, is that I feel like when it's not necessarily job hopping, when you know that that's going to be your next best move. Right. Right. When you feel like that's your next best move to get to what you really want to do, go on and hop. You know, as long as it makes sense um, financially for you. And I've done hops where I've had to go down, right? So I've even left jobs. Um, I've left jobs going to another job that's making me less money, but it's given me more time and flexibility, right? So I always tell students, usually there's three areas of, of thought process. It's making a, a lot of money or money in general, time and flexibility, and the impact that you make in the world through your career. It is amazing when all three are happening at the same time, but sometimes, like in COVID, most people just wanted flexibility, right? Or most people just wanted money, or some people just, so it changes as your life goes on. Maybe you become a parent, you're like, I just need the money, the impact can hold off for a little bit, and then I can, or maybe we can get both, all three, right? But um, I, when thinking about my own journey, this was totally all three. Mm-hmm. So it was a must, it was like, okay, money, the flexibility, because I live not too far from here, which was Mm -hmm. really nice. Um, So I was cutting my commute. And then also the impact. 
So I was like, this is a no-brainer. And when I left UCLA, my supervisor was like, "Mm, yeah, you got to take that one. (laughs) I got to take it right. Yeah, you got to (laughs) go. But come on back. (laughs) Um, Is there a point where you can stop job hopping and, like, settle into a single job? Totally, when you feel like it. But um, the times have changed where most people, like, love staying in one place at one time. Um, For a long time, I meant to say. Um, I say if you're like, I really do want to find a place where I don't have to job hop because it has everything, you want to look at what the role has that can allow you to do multiple things that you're good at at one place. So I love career coaching, but I also love event planning, and I also love like talking with different people and like graphics and marketing and that. So this job hits all those three different things for me, right? So now when I go home, I don't feel like I still don't get an opportunity to X, Y, Z. Now let's say if I was like super into like, I don't know, fashion design, then maybe this job would be harder because it's like, I still don't get a chance to do that designing piece. But if I found, maybe if I worked at Fitum, right? So if I was supporting career coaching for students in fashion design, that would feel more aligned, right? So right. it's about thinking about what you like to do and seeing which roles can capture as many as you can. Just very quickly for the students that are listening or for the people that are listening, write down the top 10 things that you need and want in your next job search, in your next job. So write 10. People usually struggle to get to 10. At that point, they're talking about, I want Doritos in the, in the counter. <laughs> you know, so it's totally fine. And then do it with someone where they make you take away five. And then they make you take away two. And then you should have your top three. Those are your non-negotiables. Like, I got to have this in my next job. And then everything else is like, okay, if I have the next two, that's a great job. If I have all 10, oh, my gosh. Right? Yeah. So that should be helpful. Um, Do you feel like you have an end goal for yourself in this field? Or are you just kind of? I don't know. So I think for me, um, I've definitely found my sweet spot within student affairs. Right. So student affairs, um, for those that may be interested in student affairs, has a lot of different what we call functional areas. You could be in fraternity, sorority life, orientation, career development, um, cares, uh, even athletics, right? Um, I have done a lot of different ones, right? I've done a lot, um, whether it's an assistantship or a job change or just a, a title change. Um, Career development is my sweet spot. I can just feel it, right? Um, And so for me, it's really about now, how do I do things like this? Um, How do I build my own brand outside of work? Um, How do I support my community? I always tell people, um, I'm usually the only career coach that people know. Like when they say like, do you know career coach? And if you happen to follow me on Instagram or my, my business or you know me from work, like I know Simone. And that's a huge deal, right? Mm-hmm. So my goal is to be as helpful as po- as possible. Um, it's not about the money. It's not about the clout. It's not about whatever. It's about like, how can I help you? Whether you want to work at Nike. Okay, I know somebody. Okay, you want to work in marketing and do a podcast? I know a studio. Like, how can I help as many people as possible right. in my area of genius, if you will? There's a book about it. Uh, it's called area of genius something like that i'll, I'll send it to you also <laughs> yeah making the thing but yeah the, i think that is my my goal and to ultimately start my own kind of career agency where people that really look like you that understand your what you're going through um i can hire people to become coaches and then just really kind of keep this whole thing going yeah so that's the ultimate goal <laughs> are there any restrictions that you see first gen students kind of placing on themselves when it comes to job hunting yeah um i i do i think I, i've had a couple meetings with a couple of students recently where i've had to literally say i give you permission to say that that's what you want mm-hmm. because sometimes our students feel like i'm not allowed to ask for an internship from like a mentor like why not right like well that would be intrusive that would be asking for things that's like 
it's not even it's not begging but it's it's almost like this thought of like that's not appropriate that's not an appropriate question to ask like hey do you have an internship that's totally appropriate to ask so I have to like literally give permission so I give permission to anyone listening to this episode I give you permission to ask for the things that you want you totally deserve it I know you've worked hard for it. I don't even know you because if you're asking for it, there's probably something in you that has been leaning you towards it. It's just time to say it. So if you want to be the director of something, say it, right? If you want an internship and a marketing PR firm, say it. And I think what ends up happening is the students who aren't first gen or the students that just have more access to different things, they're in environments where sometimes they don't have to say it because it's already sitting there. Right. And that feels unfair. And it feels like, how do I have access to that? But even those students and those people eventually have to ask for permission. Right. Right. To say, hey, I'm looking for this. Hey, I want this. Hey, I'm interested in that. I'm asking all of our first gen students, our students from that maybe aren't in these particular spaces all the time to start to reflect on the things that you want and start practicing to say out loud that that's what you want. Because most likely you'll get it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, how do y'all feel about the job search coming up? What what, what year are you in now? (laughs) We're juniors. juniors. How are you feeling about it? Mm. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Do you want to start? Yeah. How are you feeling? Do you want me to go? You could start. Okay. So I'm a sociology and Spanish double major. Mm-hmm. I chose sociology just because I'm really interested in the criminal justice kind of aspect. I know LMU does not have a criminal justice major. Mm-hmm. So it was the closest thing. Mm-hmm. Spanish is just kind of because I'm bilingual and it's like good to have. I love it. Um, I'm not really sure what I want to do. Mm-hmm. Um, very, I'm just like very passionate about the criminal justice system and how like people of color are like at higher rates like incarcerated and so mm-hmm. i know like it's something that needs to be fixed mm-hmm. i don't know what job i will do that will like help with that mm-hmm. and like i've thought of going to law school but it's a yeah. lot of like time and money and i just don't know if that's like something that i want to do but it's like it's in the back of my head mm-hmm. but it's kind of like hard because i don't even know like what exactly i want to do i just know mm-hmm. like kind of like the I don't know, like the category, or like the category, like I know it's criminal. I want criminal justice, but it's sure. like hard. I mean, when you think about like your life after LMU, and you wake up, do you want to go to an office? Do you want to stay at home? Do you want to work with kids? Like, who's in? Who who are you who are you going to mm-hmm. serve that day? Curious. Uh, a lot of my like volunteering stuff has been with kids so i've oh. i've like thought about the like education and stuff so maybe like juveniles like working with them specifically i think mm-hmm. that would be like an interesting thing have you tried anything working with juveniles yet no i haven't like i haven't done like anything in that let's try that yeah <laughs> that's it it's really about like like i knew you were itching somewhere because mm-hmm. we don't just sit on our hands with it right like Criminal justice is not here, so you're doing sociology. Totally makes sense. Mm-hmm. You're interested in, and, and think about like what's your day to day. A part of it is being really honest with yourself. Yeah. Do I want to get up and go to a particular building or do I not? Mm-hmm. That's the new first question. Okay, you do. What's the building? Maybe it's with kids filled with it. Maybe mm-hmm. it's corporate. Okay, cool. You said kids. Something in you said yeah. kids. Then you say you already did volunteer, and I'm like, oh, that's a resume bullet. Okay, (laughs) hold on now. We're not there yet, but that's the second (laughs) appointment. But then the next thing is kind of like, okay, so if you haven't explored the juvenile space and place, thank you for sharing that, because now I can try and figure out how we can get you there. Mm. That's the key. Then you can exit out. You're either going to be falling asleep watching them all like (laughs) I did, or you're going to love it. (laughs) And you can just keep going. You're going to meet new people. Mm. Right? So that's that. What about you? Okay. Is that helpful? Yes. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> um, I'm pretty similar to Alexa, which, mm-hmm. like, I don't really know exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm psych and poli sci, mm. and I'm potentially picking up a PR minor. Um, I also, I'm on the pre-law track as well. Okay. Um, so that's kind of what I went into college thinking about. I'm also, I also have worked with kids. Okay. And um, I'm also pretty passionate about like mental health and like the psychology perspective because mm-hmm. I'm a double major. Yeah. Um, so I'm kind of in between like potentially like being a psychologist and having like my own practice mm-hmm. or like going to law school. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm also really interested in like 
medical malpractice and things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, Just because of like recent things that have happened in my life, I've noticed a lot of um, discrepancies in the healthcare system, Mm -hmm. which I'm really passionate about. Mm -hmm. Um, But I really have no idea because I feel like I like a lot of different things. Sure. Um, yeah, so I really, I don't know. <laughs> you're trying to figure out, you have a lot of different interests. Yeah. And academically, you're mm-hmm. putting your hand in all of them. I am, yeah. I kind of wanted to diversify my major just in case. Yeah. I don't know. I really don't know where I wanted to go. Yeah. So I was kind of like, okay, I'm going to do all the things I like, yeah. and then maybe I'll figure something out. Is there a particular, like, homework assignment or, like, class that you, like, easily gravitate to? Oh, gosh, like oh tough. yeah like i will do that assignment all day long like i will I, I love going to that class or i love that those assignments all the time that's ooh, that's <laughs> tough yeah I'm or maybe taking, it's a mix maybe it's multiple yeah i'm taking pretty hard classes right now as mm-hmm. far as um my psychology major um i do enjoy my autism class it's really interesting i don't know if i would want to go into that mm-hmm. area of study I do find it interesting. I also really enjoy my Marx and Marxism class, mm. which is completely different. Mm-hmm. Like, um, I don't know. I feel like I'm kind of all over the place with my interests. I think this is the perfect place to be all over the place is college and figuring it out. I think where I was leading with that question is, is that for you, you do have a lot of different places. You have a lot of hands in a lot of different academic spaces. Right. Um, What's nice about college is, is they do tell you what the discipline is all about. Right. So if there is a particular, like if you're saying psychology specifically is pretty hard, luckily you can do a lot with a psychology degree, but you may want to start talking to other folks, um, whether it's alumni or a faculty member. And the question would be, if you had to do it all over again, how would you do it differently with mm-hmm. a psychology degree? Okay, yeah. Right, and ask that question to as many people as possible mm-hmm. um, because you'll want to start canceling some things. Yeah. I think what's it's now is you're going into your junior year, you're in your junior year, you're about to go into your junior second semester. You want to start narrowing just a little bit. You don't got to do enough because mm-hmm. I know it's hard to narrow, but just start to say, I talked to my psychology professor. They told me this. They, cause sometimes they'll be like, if I were to be able to tell y'all that this <laughs> makes no money, I would say it. Yeah. yeah. So sometimes, like, you got to ask people, right? Mm-hmm. Take that off the plate. I'm very curious about that minor in PR mm-hmm. because I feel like let's do something with it. And if you love it, great. If you don't, let's stop. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Because at some point, you do have to make that decision. What I often see is that students may come out at the end of it all with a lot of academic interest and expression, but not sure how to place that in a job. Right, yeah. So all you have to do, and you're in the perfect time, is start asking folks within those different disciplines, which way should you start blowing your wind? Mm-hmm. Basically, like, if you had to do it all over again, how would you have done differently? People who were in student affairs probably would have said, had I asked that question when I was in, like, hey, what is your degree in? Would you have gotten a degree in anything different? Would you have experienced, would you have gone a different route? They probably would have told me I would have got a master's in counseling instead of a master's in education Mm -hmm. because in most community colleges, a master's in counseling is accepted and a master's in education is not. Mm -hmm. It makes double the amount of money. Oh, wow. Who would have known? Someone would have also told me that there are these things called HR recruiters. Mm -hmm. They do very similar work with college students, but you can work in corporate spaces. It can be a lot more flexible. There is more travel and they make more money. Uh I would have never known. Mm -hmm. So I think right now what your job is, or what I would uh, hope that you start to do is to start asking more questions about the people who did the exploration before you. Whether that's a advisor, a faculty member, a friend, Lexi, me, anyone that had that same major, how'd that story go? How'd Mm -hmm. that story go? Go online, Mm -hmm. how'd that story go? And then you do gotta jump in one, with an internship so whether you do it on the pr side whether you do it with the kids whether you do it with the medical assistant degree jump in one so again you can start to figure out if you're gonna be sleeping in the thing or Mm -hmm. if you're gonna be like i love it yeah y'all are kind of the same boat yeah Yeah. just it's just getting in yeah (laughs) it's helpful yeah no yeah very (laughs) helpful yeah well thank you so much for this this is really helpful yeah very helpful and i feel like people listening are definitely gonna take a lot of good advice from it
Good. Thanks for yeah. having me, y'all. Yes, thank you. And then, is that it? Yeah, yes. all right. Well, <laughs> thank you for listening. You know where yeah. to find us. For the gen, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. Spotify, TikTok, wherever you listen. Yeah. yeah. We will see you guys next time. Bye. 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 Yay. Thank Yay. you so much. Thank you.